everybody. So uh, believe it or not, it's time to start talking about Christmas. I am not one to rush holidays, but one thing you kind of have to be on top of is amaryllis if you want these bulbs to bloom for the holidays. And I think amaryllis are probably my favorite holiday plants. I'm not much into poinsettias, so I really like amaryllis bulbs. But I will tell you, just in the past couple of weeks, I learned something that I had no idea about, about amaryllis bulbs, which is that they bloom at different times. Now this shouldn't become a surprise because uh, all bulbs bloom at different times. I mean, even with daffodils, you've got you know, early, mid and late season bloomers. So it's the same thing with amaryllis, but I didn't realize that some are actually ready to bloom more around the holidays and others bloom like January to April. So if you've ever planted amaryllis for the holidays and then not had blooms until, you know, Valentine's Day or beyond, that's probably what's going on here. So let me tell you what I found out. Okay, so Longfield Bulbs sent me a whole bunch of amaryllis so I could show you about this. But they have a really nice system because they mark which bulbs are going to bloom early. And here's the difference. See this? Product of Peru. If they're grown in South America, they will bloom sooner, AKA they will bloom around Christmas time. Product of Holland. If they're grown in the Netherlands, they're not gonna bloom until probably after January. Now, of course, as with everything, timing bulbs to bloom at a certain time is uh, difficult and potentially imprecise. So there's a little bit of wiggle room here, but I'm going to be planting both types for you today to just show you how you plant up amaryllis, um, but also just to let you know that if you're looking for something to bloom around Christmas time, look for ones that have been grown in South America or are marked early blooming that typically means the same thing because you're more likely to actually get your flowers blooming at the holidays if that's when you want them okay so i have multiple ways that i'm going to be planting up bulbs here um, some are going to be individual some are going to be in groups um, i'm going to be using some of these now this is i think technically an orchid pot because it's got the holes in the side just make sure you have drainage in your amaryllis pot um, that's Quite helpful if you're growing if you need that if you're growing them in soil so what I'm gonna do and I've got um, I also have these same concept these I'm gonna plant a matching set in so I'm just gonna use some sphagnum moss um, which I've just been sort of reconstituting in a pot here and I just use that to sort of roughly line the edges on these just so that you don't end up with soil popping out everywhere I mean, I don't find it to be a real problem, but you also just, you know, prevent it ahead of time if you can. So I just sort of take a very thin layer and smush it up against the holes there. Okay, then your next step is just to take your regular potting mix. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is where it gets a little hard to keep that moss sort of around the sides there. You want to fill this up. Now this pot is pretty small for a bulb, but you want to fill this up, um, well, a little bit of the way because we're getting to the important part here. Okay, so this bulb that we're planting up now is called Nymph. This is such a cute variety. Um, now when you're looking for bulbs, you know, you want like all bulbs, you want them to be firm. Um, and you don't want any signs of your know, rot or any spots of softness when you're buying them. Now this one is actually um, starting to put up a shoot. So this could come a little earlier than we might have expected. But you just want to nestle those roots in there. The key thing with amaryllis is it's unlike other bulbs in that you do not bury this. So when you plant an amaryllis, Look for the uh, equator, basically planted with soil halfway up. That's as far as you want the soil to go. And of course you want a little bit of a lip in the pot to allow you to water it without water going everywhere. And if you're worried about those bare shoulders sticking up, don't worry about that too much because you can always fill in the soil with stones or I like to use moss, um, like, a, um, like a reindeer moss kind of thing on there. Okay. 
So it's going to feel, you know, not super firmly planted in there. Um, that's okay. Don't worry. It's not going to go anywhere. You don't want it obviously tipping right from the get-go, but those roots go down quick. Now, once you have this in there, you want to add just enough water to sort of moisten the soil, do, especially until, I mean, especially before you start seeing any sign of growth out of it. Don't overwater it um, because that's not good for bulbs. Okay, so there's nymph. The other way I really love to plant amaryllis is to group them. Um, actually, it's my favorite way. I love to plant them uh, in containers together. This is a pot that I really like growing amaryllis in. And I thought I had a great idea this year, which was that I was going to plant, I was, I found two plastic cans that fit in there. And my goal, my thought was that I would plant an early blooming set of bulbs in one and a late blooming set of bulbs in the other and then I could just swap out the can and use the same pot. My plan however was foiled because the early blooming bulbs I'm going to be using are called Pink Rival. Um, really nice hot pink. I like untraditional holiday colors sometimes so that was my first plan. And then I was going to swap in, I was going to swap in this beauty and it's called Picati and it's the most creamy white with kind of a chartreuse center and just the most delicate little edge of pinkish red around the edges. However, can you see the difference in bulb size? I can't fit three of those bulbs in this pot. So I had to come up with a different plan for that, but nonetheless I am going to plant the pink rival in this pot. So the process is exactly the same. Get yourself some potting mix in the bottom there. And then you just want to, you know, you have to sort of eyeball where you want the top of the bulb to be versus um, how high, so you can figure out how high the soil has to be. I mean, you can sort of obviously adjust this around just like you would if you were planting anything else. Just remember to leave yourself a lip for that watering. And this is a pretty tight fit even for these guys. Um, so these are really, as the Brits say, cheek by jowl. Uh, but I think I can cram them in there. And you know, the best thing about bulbs, everything you need is in this bulb. That's why when you see those like waxed amaryllis bulbs, that's why you can grow them like that because they have everything they need here. Okay, so I'm just sort of nestling those in together. Once again, we'll fill in with some soil you know, around the edges. So again, Pink Rival is a nice early blooming variety. Um, so I think I could expect to, you know, again, timing is, is tough. You know, you're looking at probably maybe six weeks. So that will put us a little bit before Christmas. Now, amaryllis flowers last a long time, especially if once they start flowering, you get them out of direct sun. They'll last a long time. So, you know, by middle of December, I'm ready for, I'm ready to be in Christmas mode. So I'll appreciate that color then. Okay, those are all set to go um, and just ready for some watering. Now there's one other way you might have seen to grow amaryllis bulbs, and that is in just in water. Now I am always a little nervous about this method. Um, it works, it just always makes you a little nervous having that water sit in there. Um, but we're gonna do it with this one. And actually, this is kind of a cool vase. Let me take out the uh, glass bubbles. This is kind of a cool vase for it because, um, you know, this will help support. If it gets a little floppy, this will help support it upright. When you're planting um, amaryllis, you, you want a pot that's got probably an inch and a half, ideally an inch and a half to two inches around the outside of the bulb. But as you can see, um, like everything, I sort of push that rule a little bit and that's fine uh, because they don't need a lot from you, especially this first year when we're starting with new bulbs. We're gonna use some glass, what do we call these things? Some of the glass bobbly marble things. And 
I think you want like, you want like, I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, three to five inches in there because what you want is the roots will work their way through there. And so that's what you're looking for is to have enough of a stable base for the roots to work their way in there. Now we've got another late bloomer going in here. This one's called Magnum. And this is supposed to have enormous flowers. I think this is gonna be a stunner. So one of the things you wanna do when you're planting in water, and you can also do this in soil, but if you see these sort of um, kind of crispy, hairier roots on the bottom, remove those because those are dead. Those are not going to produce anything. And the last thing you want is sort of dead material going into your water because of course that's how you get that sort of nasty water situation that I have a fear of. So I'm just gonna clean, clean those up a little bit. Okay, so you wanna start with a base of your pebbles or in this case, these little glass marble things. And then you wanna set your bulb in there. These roots are going to work their way down. So that's what you want is enough room there for those roots to do their thing. And then you can just go in and you can just add in enough to go about halfway up the bulb or even a little more, whatever you need to sort of stabilize that bulb in there. All right, now when you water, you just want this water to go to the bottom of the bulb, that's it. So you just wanna really carefully, don't pour water into the top of the bulb, that's not good either. You just wanna water, because what's gonna happen is those roots will wick up the water and that's what they need. So better to go lighter on the water than heavy on the water on these, there. So I've got the water up to, this is the level right here. So those roots are in the water and that's how it's going to feed itself. So there is, there's how to plant it in glass if you're interested in doing that. It's all really pretty easy. As far as care goes, um, you know, first of all, just moisten the soil very lightly when you plant them just to kind of settle it. But then don't water it really again until you see some growth coming out of it. And then when you do see growth coming out of it, um, just keep that soil sort of slightly moist or damp. Is there a difference? I'm not sure, but don't overwater it. Um, put it in your house at regular sort of household temperatures in a sunny window that will help it get going. Now, one of the things I have done in the past with amaryllis bulbs that seem to be, um, if I get a late start on it, or um, they seem to be a little pokey, is I have put them on a seed germination mat. And that does speed up the process of get, it, getting everything going. So if you're watching this video a little later and you're a little bit behind, um, that's what, if you happen to have, I mean, I wouldn't go buy germination matches for this, but if you happen to have that setup, you can employ that uh, for this purpose as well. And that'll get things going a little bit. And then once again, once they start growing, get them off that, that heat mat, but just keep, keep them in the sun. And then once they do flower, you can move them. If you move them out of the sun, those flowers will stay on the plant a little bit longer. When they're done blooming, uh, go in there, cut off the flower stalk and just keep them in a nice sunny location. Let those leaves uh, grow and do their thing. Fertilize it maybe once a month or so, just with like a general all purpose, like household plant fer fertilizer. Uh, and then in summer, when it's warm enough, you can put the whole pot outside or you can plant them in your garden. And then what you do is you either bring that pot inside or dig them up out of your garden. You want them dormant for six weeks. So then you're gonna put them in a cold, dark, cool, dark place to give them a rest. And then you bring them back out and then you can re go through this whole process next year. So you wanna count back from when you want them to bloom next year. Okay. That's it. I hope you guys are planting some amaryllis this year. Let me know in the comments if you are and what you're gonna do with them. If you're keeping them, if you're growing them for gifts, um, if you've never grown amaryllis before, if you haven't, you really should try it because honestly, they're so easy. In any case, get going on your amaryllis if you're gonna do it this year um, and I hope you do. All right, have a great day in your garden. Bye everybody.